done. Deal? I know you do. I appreciate you. Beautiful. All right, so let's run through these problems. So um, the first problem, the first problem, let me do the best I can to draw somewhat of a parabola in there. Very straight. All right, so it says here the vertex, it appears on our thing, is at negative 2, negative 5. But then... Where it crosses the x-axis, th this is where it gets a little goofy, and I apologize for this. I'd say that's like 1.1 comma 0, and that's uh, about negative 4.1 comma 0. Okay? Now, I'm guesstimating I, what had happened was once we sent the computer program to print, this graph adjusted for some reason. So typically, if they had problems like this you would definitely be able to see where things wound up so um, so this I hopefully looks kind of close enough to the graph if there's enough information for us to to run through it with what's up on the graph okay you good yeah 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 just run out thanks bud all right so let's uh, let's walk through and I know this is a newer concept so I want to dim the lights so you Okay. Don't be scared. All right, so, so this is problem number one. It's supposed to look similar to the graph. I tried to do the best I can. So the first thing that we need to do, and this will be the gimme answer on quizzes. The domain of the parabolas we are working on here in Algebra 1, the domains will always be the same, negative, positive, infinity. Okay? That's... And what that basically means, that if I came this direction forever, and I went that direction forever, and even had in between forever, the graph exists either above or below or right on the line. That's, that's what you need to look at that stuff for, okay? The range is where things start getting sillier, okay? So the range, you have to remember, are Y values. So down... All the way down there forever is negative infinity. Agree? Yeah. So as I come up, this point right here is my lowest point on my graph. Agree? But the range deals with the y value. So what is the y value at that point? Negative 5. Negative 5. And it, it's a point, yes? Negative 5. Okay, so the range here, and this is the only time in here that we really use the hard brackets for this goes from negative 5, and then if I go forever upward, I'm going all the way up to positive infinity. Okay, so that's, that's a little bit different. So think about the range. It's going vertically, up and down, like an elevator. Okay? Five. All right. So letter C, they want to know, do we have a max or a min? Um. So what we need to look at is this. If our parabola opens this way, we have a min. If it opens this way, we have a max. Okay, so this is a min. And so what is my lowest y value? Negative 5. Oh. Okay, kind of silly. No. But it, it becomes weird because we're flipping back and forth between x and y values. Okay. Um, and again, we're, we're going to do the best we can, making sure we get these things clear in our head. But, and I know that it's different. Uh, the roots, so the roots that we have, we already have listed. And uh, and I know my graph isn't the exact same, but I just have the, the points labeled. That's my roots. You know you're dealing with a root when the y values are zero. Okay? So, I, and again, this is all kind of new. It's like the summation of a whole bunch of definitions. Yeah? On the, on the root? And you can't tell, like, I'm looking, I don't, I don't know if I'm getting, I don't want to estimate wrong, I'm going to answer wrong. Yeah. And like, so if I ever gave you on a quiz, something that wound up like this, and, I, and I'm, hopefully I won't, estimation is totally fine. So, like, if, if I said it's 1.1 and you put, like, 1.3, you nailed it. Uh, okay? Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but the, what had happened was we had done all this on, on computer, oh, and so when we was done, for whatever reason, once we sent it to PDF, we didn't realize that this one graph shifted a little bit. 
And, and it's just one of those things. It's not, you know, not that we, we did anything right. It's just the computer, whatever little hiccup was there, it made that happen. So if it was ever an estimated, and I would like to take a good look at a, a tester quiz, and if I ever saw that it was goofy, what I would do is I would probably write in and say, hey, these are these two points. Use this. And so I would give it to you. Is that okay? Yeah, no, I, 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 I won't bury it going, ah, you know, so you put 1.2, but I think it's 1.1. It's sure you missed it. No, I'm not going to do that. So, all right. Letter E, letter E should be relatively easy. Just go into the vertex. Vertex we have is negative 2 comma negative 5. And, and I think that the vertex was easier to find. You're just counting it in the X direction than the Y direction. And then, and then I'm going to look at letter F, and I'm going to do letter F two different ways. Uh, we want to know where this is increasing. Okay, now I'm going to shade for you in blue where this is increasing. Starting here, it starts there, and it goes here. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that the answer is it's increasing from negative 2 and go into infinity. But now let's let's kind of figure out your language that would help you say that that's increasing. Give me give me by looking at the blue we're go, we're starting at the vertex. So it's going what direction? Give me two directions. It's going which way? Right. It's going right, agree? It's going and it's going up. Right and up seems good. Okay, so basically what you're doing is I'm going right and up, right and up, okay? Or I'm going up and right, up and right. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, this was not asked on here, but I just want to make sure you feel comfortable with this. If I said, hey, where is this decreasing? Well, it's decreasing here. And I know this didn't ask for it, but I'm just going to put it anyhow. So where does this how could we make that work for decreasing? It's going right and down. Okay? So, so, so this is going, we'll say, up and right. And this would decreasing, we could say it's going down and right. Okay? And then if, if I wanted to list where it's decreasing, it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. And it's a soft bracket or a parenthesis on the negative 2 because right at negative 2, right at the vertex, that is the point where it stops going down to going up or starts going up to going down. Okay, so right at that very instant, it's not going up or down. It's just kind of like it's actually 0. But it's that's kind of the the point where it's you know things are taking place. Yeah. The vertex is the first point, right? The vertex is the either the very lowest point on parabola or the very highest point. And that's where we would use that negative b over 2a and then plugged it into the original equation, but oh. we don't have the equation. So it, it's either the highest or lowest point. So th this right here is definitely the vertex. Okay? All right. And again, I know we have totally different language that we're using. We have a lot of vocabulary. But then this says, hey, where is our graph positive? And this is... This gets tricky sometimes. You have to use your roots if you have them in order to answer this. This is positive anywhere above the x-axis. So in this green region above, so there's two different locations where the graph is definitely above that. And there's one location where it's definitely below it. Okay, so, sorry, i got to shade it in just because it makes me feel better about myself when it's all shaded. Uh, I'm getting there, hopefully. All right, so we're pretty close to having that shaded in. Anything up there is going to be where it's positive, okay, meaning our y value is positive. So it's positive from negative infinity to negative 4.1 as a soft bracket, and then from a soft bracket, 1.1 to infinity. And again, I had put those, I had put those um, values, and again, it should show up a little bit better. On, on on a test or quiz, but the negative 4.1 is not a hard bracket because right at four point or negative 4.1, the y value is zero, and zero is not positive or negative; it's a signless number. 
Okay, so that's why you have the soft brackets there. And again, the, the vocabulary for this stuff is way different than what you're used to. So it's just a matter of you deciphering. You know, am I using the X values to answer a question? Am I using the Y values to answer a question? Am I using, are one of the values a point? If it's a point, I have to use a hard bracket. So the only place up there I have a hard bracket is on the range. Does that make sense? And that should be probably true for everything. The range will be the only one that has a hard bracket. The infinities never have a hard bracket because I can't get there. I get close, but I can't get there. Okay. Can I move to the second problem? Any questions about the first one? Are we okay? And again, I know this decrease and was not part of the answer, but that's okay. I just wanted you to see where things were taking place there. Okay. Uh, problem, can I go to number two? Okay. So problem number two, we have our XY axis. Hey, what does it appear the vertex is on number two? Goes down. My vertex is right there, so this parabola is doing this. Okay? So that's the point zero, zero all day long. I, I feel really comfortable about that. Do you feel comfortable with the way that's labeled? Okay. So let's step through and see if we can answer. What is our domain of this function? It's the same on all of them. Yeah, negative to positive infinity. It's the same for all of our parabolas that we will work on in this class. Okay? Don't miss this question. This is one point you can get on test or quiz. When's your test or quiz? Next week sometime. Okay. All right. So then for letter B, we want the range. So the range is referring to the Y value. Okay. Now, you always start from the bottom. What number is way down low? Negative infinity. And I'm going to come all the way up to what point? Zero. And I realize it says zero, zero, but we're only talking about the Y portion of it. So I'm going to come from way down low, negative infinity, all the way up to zero. And that is a point, so it's going to be a hard bracket there. Okay, so range is definitely, domain and range are both directional. Domain is left, right, range is up, down. Why does the domain always say negative to positive infinity? Well, if I went forever that way towards the Star Wars poster, or I went forever this way out the door, the graph either exists above or below the line at some point. Now, it's going to be way down. You know, if I, if I picked a point way, way over here, how far down is that graph going to be in a Y direction? I mean, it's thousands, negative thousands, negative tens of thousands. Okay, so it, it definitely... Definitely has some characteristics that are going to, we have to worry about there. Then we have to say, okay, do I have a max or do I have a min? I have a max. Why is that? Because I have a high point. Yeah. So I have the highest point. So I have a max. What is my Y value at that max? Zero. Okay. It's like, well, how can zero be a maximum? It's just where the turning point took place of the graph. The minimum is also the turning point. Okay, so we're not worried that it's a numerical value that's zero. It's like zero's maximum. That's weird. You know, zero's not even big. Oh, I get it. So we have to watch out for that. Letter D kind of is a little bit of a cur curveball. Okay, I want a root or roots. Well, this has one root. How do I know I'm looking at a root? What has to be zero? Yeah. So it's a root if it crosses or touches the x axis. X axis. So what value has to be zero every time? The y. The y. So being this is zero, zero comma zero, this means this is my only root. And like, yeah, but it's your vertex. Your vertex could be a root as well. Okay, especially in this case, because we're just coming up and kissing the x-axis. We're touching it and going right back down. Okay, So we have a single root on this one. Sometimes they'll have double roots. Sometimes you have a bad problem like number one where our graph, for whatever reason, shifted from the electronic days of from here to there. Okay, Letter E says, what is the vertex? Well, my vertex is the same thing as my root. It's like, what? well, how can they be the same thing? Because the vertex is the point where it goes from going up to down or down to up. 
which is zero, zero, it's the same thing. So these three things are referring to the exact same point on this problem. It's not going to be on all problems. All right, then letter F says, hey, what's our axis of symmetry? Our axis of symmetry is always the X value of the vertex. Okay, that's a vertical line. That vertical line at X equals zero goes right up this right here. It's right up and down that. So it's not part of, the, you don't have to have it on the graph. It doesn't mean if you have it on the graph that you have the right parabola, it just becomes a nice gauge for you to realize what I could fold over. And then letter G says, where is this increasing? Okay, so increasing, we said before, it goes up and right. I'm going up and right, 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 all the way to there. That's where it's increasing. So from negative infinity to zero, zero soft bracket, because at the point zero, zero, it stops going from increasing to decreasing right at that instant. It's neither increasing or decreasing at zero, zero. It just starts changing the direction all the way. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Where is this graph positive? So here, it, yeah, nowhere is exactly right. Positive, again, means it's above the x-axis. Now, some people might say, well, what about zero, zero? Is that positive or negative? Well, zero, like you said earlier, has no negative. Yeah, zero is a signless number. It's not positive or negative. So this this answer for where is it positive or negative is um, does not exist. DNE. Now, if you can't remember DNE, you have to give me something. None doesn't work. BLT. Not gonna be there. You know, BLT. Yeah. Oh, what does that one stand for? Uh, yeah, baby. Uh, but uh, there, uh, there's the, yeah, there's there's not work. Gotcha. All right. I get it without letter. So. So again, my friends, I, I completely understand. This is a very new concept. This is a, like you, your brain kind of got all these vocabulary words I have to remember. Yeah, I understand. There's only one part that has a square bracket, and that's the uh, the range. Okay, the range on all these is going to have a square bracket at whatever the number is, not the infinity. But everything else deals with the x value or the y value somehow. Okay, so way goofier than we're used to. All right, so I'm still on the notes. I'm on page 86 in the notes, and there was a word problem that we did not get to yesterday. Now, you know, word problems, you know, parabolas work nicely. You throw a ball in the air, it follows a parabolic arc, okay? You throw a paper airplane, it follows a parabolic arc. If you, uh, kick a ball up into the air, it follows a parabolic arc, okay, so it makes a parabola. So there's definitely things. If you kick a ball in the air, does it get to a maximum height at some point? What does it do once it gets to that maximum height? What happens next? It starts coming back down, right? Okay, so these are all things that deal with para parabolas. So this one says two friends, Alan and Ann, again, these are made up people. We don't need to know who they really are. They're members of a model rocket club at their school. They're in a gang? Yeah. Their school is having a competition to see whose model rocket can stay in the air the longest. Okay. The science teacher has helped the students construct equations that describe the height of the rocket from the ground when it has been launched from the roof of the school. At, following our Allen and Ann's equations, where T is measured in seconds and H is measured in feet. Okay, so that, that's kind of an important part to know about this, this question. Okay, uh, this is page 86 at the bottom. Okay, so T is measured in seconds and H is measured in feet. Okay, so let's look at our graph here. That's that value. That's that value. Okay. So, Alan has some sort of equation, negative 16t squared. T is the same thing as using x, which is using a variable, plus 60t plus 56. 
and has h equals negative 16t squared plus 12t plus 108. Okay, so now, this pink line is basically like the building. Agree? The pink is the building somehow. So, who looks like they launched from a higher location in the building? And you know, Anne's on, on the top of the gym, and Alan's at the, on the top of this building. The gym's a little taller, right? I think so. I mean, think about the highest point on this campus. I'd say the gymnasium has a higher roof line than this part of the building. Agree? Yeah. Which gym? Main gym. South gym. Okay. So, so Alan's definitely launched from a, a, a lower location, and this was the path his rocket took, and launched from a higher location, and a rocket didn't necessarily, you know, from, from Anne's initial height, her rocket didn't go up that high. Her rocket was kind of a dud. Okay? Was it too heavy? Did not have enough uh, rocket engine stuff? I don't know. Okay? You know, I, they, there's stipulations that we just don't know. So, whose rocket was launched from a higher elevation? Anne. Anne. Okay. Hers, her initial start was here. It's higher. Okay. Whose rocket was in the air longer? Now, this is kind of gets goofy. Remember, T is time. So this is in seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. So whose rocket was in the air longer? Yeah, because Anne's was in the air for about three seconds. But Alan's was in the air for 4.5 seconds, had an extra second and a half. Okay? So Alan's rocket was in the air longer. Even though Ann launched from a higher location, whatever her rocket didn't do, it didn't get up, you know, a little, you know, higher. Whose rocket went higher? Well, whose vertex appears to be the highest? Here's a vertex here, and here's a vertex here. Yeah, Alan appears to have, I mean, it's pretty close, but Alan appears that his went higher. Okay. What does the x-intercept represent? What do these two values represent? Landing. Landing, yeah. That green is the ground. Let's go. So when the rockets hit the ground, okay, there's a certain amount of time that takes place. And I don't know if you've ever launched rockets or, or not. But, I mean, there was back in the day, we, I, we used to build model rockets, and, and it was always funny because you'd have someone who would bring out a huge rocket, and it wouldn't go that high. But then you had a guy who had a little tiny rocket that like went crazy high. Yeah. What was the difference? Well, you're using the same size little motor, or it was a, basically a firecracker that you had a controlled explosion going downward. If it, it went outward, it'd be, you know, make your rocket go boom, and it wouldn't go anywhere. So, uh, I remember we had all kinds of things. I remember the guy down the street from me, he actually had a rocket that he could push a button on the, the remote and it would take pictures. Now, of course, we were using really cruddy film back then. You know, you guys have good, you know, digital stuff that you're using. So, we used to go, he'd take the pictures, we'd take the film and have it developed. You'd take it over to the Walgreens, have it developed, come back three days later. And he couldn't see anything. So, oh, what is that? I don't know. It was cruddy film, but you know it is what it is. So yeah. Um, have you ever been to the Broadmoor? It's like by Colorado Springs. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, definitely we almost go there every single year. But I think it's one a year. It's like I think like three years ago. Me and my brothers there's a rocket bottle competition where you make a bottle rocket and you see how high and far we go. And me and my brothers won. Was it you were like filled it up with air pressure and then it? Went, um, I think so. I can't remember all of the other. But I know that we won. That's pretty. But cool. then there's a lightning storm. So it yeah, baby. Well, yeah. So basically, okay, story time. Story. So since we're on the topic of rockets, like we, uh, there was a time where uh, we went to the park with some friends and we made rockets and we used like air or something. We just uh -huh. put it close the valve real fast. Uh -huh. And it launched a rocket really high. Yeah. Like cool. Compressed air. It'll work. Yeah. I mean, again, it's a controlled directional explosion. What you want is what the air is doing. The, the air is going to release 
through the path of least resistance, which is the base of it, which every action has an equal to opposite reaction. Yep. Okay. Giddy up. All right. So there's a couple more parts to this. It says when do the cr two points cross? When the two graphs cross at point A, what does this point signify? Well, telling me they were identical. Yeah. The time. The time was the same, and their heights were the same. Now, just because Anne's was coming down at the time and Alan's was going up, that's okay. You know, at one second into the launch, it looks like they're both a little bit above 100, 100 feet, just above 100 feet. So this is the point, basically, one second, comma, I don't know, 105 feet. Okay, so what's significant at that time? Both rockets are same feet, are same elevation or height or what, however you want to say it. It's fine. Okay. And then at point A, was Anne's rocket going up or down? Well, Anne's was going down. Is down. And Alan's is up. Okay. And then which rocket traveled further overall? Well, once the rocket goes... It's going to make a certain trajectory. So, so just by looking at it, if you were on a roller coaster, would this be a further distance for Alan, or would Anne have a further distance? Okay. Alan definitely did. Look at it. Look at how far. I mean, if they, these guys both launch at the same time, whoop. 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 So, Al, Alan's traveled a, a longer distance. Like if I if I was gonna be on a ride and I had to, if I had to make something up, I'd say, hey, I want to go on the one that I'm in the rocket longer. Like like you know the rocket. Uh, who's doing the rocket these days? Is it uh, NASA? Yeah. Uh, is it Elon that's doing the one? Who, who's the one that? Well, Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Bezos is taking yeah. people up. So that rocket goes up and it's. Gets out of the atmosphere, but it's in free fall, and the, basically you're not necessarily in outer space. You are on the outskirts of the atmosphere, but gravity is pulling you back. Thank you. <laughs> so gravity is pulling back, so that makes you weightless. Now, let's let's say let's say you have rocket company A and rocket company B. Would you rather be on a rocket that you your total time in the rocket, whether it was going up and then parachuting back to Earth? Was ten minutes, or would you want to be in the guy who was going to give you an hour? Hour. Yeah, I want to check that out. I want to be experience an hour rather than going. Whoop! Take your seatbelt seat off for a couple seconds. Let's get back seatbelt then, and then we can parachute back down to Earth. Well, I'd rather be up for an hour. I want to check it out. Okay, I want the ride. You know, you you go to the amusement park and they say, Hey, do you want the roller coaster to go around one time or five times? Five times is always the answer. I want to be on as most, the maximum amount of time. So, I don't know. It's kind of cool. So, which rocket traveled further overall? It was definitely Alan's rocket. Because Okay, so you just have to think about the time that's doing. I mean, at this instant, they're at zero seconds. 0.5, one second, they're at the same location. 1.5, two seconds, 2.5, three seconds, and's done. 3.5, 4 seconds, 4.5, okay, Alan's done. So you're definitely on a rocket for a longer period of time. On, yet, you know, people are like, oh, it would be terrifying. No, I'm, just, I'm trying to equate it to, you know, if it was fun to do or not fun to do. I don't know. But I just wanted to go with that. So, my friends, um, I know I didn't mark off homework today. If any of you have any whole, old homeworks, but I would like to make sure that page 87 through 89 are all done for tomorrow, okay? Uh, we did problems one and two. So then you have problems three, four, five, six, and then you have something about a rancher. See if you can figure that out. 
Okay? The, uh, 